So it's looking like Tim Zhu and Virgil Ortiz will be stepping into negotiations this week. Now, this is just word on the street. Um, this is not a news article, but I did see it on social media. I went back, bruh, and uh, tried to find the actual um, uh, piece um, that I seen it on. But, bruh, I can't find it. And I want to go and put this video out. I, I try to give you guys at least, right, bare minimum, two to three videos um, when I'm able to record, bruh, because I be out and about and uh, living my life. So when I do get to... Um, sit in front of my computer and give you guys some news. I try to give you at least three or four videos to hold you over until tomorrow, right? So uh, I know you guys are looking for a Tim Zoo update. We all got excited about Terrence Crawford and Tim Zoo possibly seeing each other, but it looked like it's not going to happen, all right? It, it might be Virgil Ortiz and Tim Zoo, depending on if Virgil and uh, Oscar De La Hoya don't outprice themselves with Tim Zoo. And it's more than likely going to happen over in Australia. All right. So um, it is what it is, right? I'm still with this fight. I'm still waiting. Now, is it a good tune-up to see Terrence Crawford? In my opinion, I don't know, right? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not, right? Because here's the thing. Um, it's two totally different styles. Now, I do think, right, when you, when you think about Virgil Ortiz's power, and when you think about his power, yeah, it might be, right? It might be. But then when you think about his speed um, and and boxing IQ, right, maybe not, right? I don't know. I do think it might be a good fight uh, as far as a tune-up for Tim Zhu if he could get past Virgil Ortiz. I'm not saying Tim Zhu gets past Virgil Ortiz. Uh, no way, no. How uh, he going to have to prove that with his fist? I like uh, fights where I can't predict who's going to win. So that's usually why I bring the fights that I bring to the table. Some are hit or miss, right, because I'm, I'm all over the place. I I do stuff in the lightweight division, the, the bantamweight division, all the way up to the heavyweights. So I know some fights are just hit or miss for you guys. But uh, sad that to say, if I bring it to the table, more than not, I don't know who's going to win. And uh, that's that's what I usually like to bring to the table. Uh, saying that to say, um, this is still a fight. I don't know who's going to win this fight. I do think that at 154 pounds, especially seeing that Virgil's uh, first fight at 154 pounds was a first round uh, stoppage, right? First round stoppage to a certain degree, right? To a certain degree, you can say he ain't got enough experience at 154 pounds to really challenge uh, Tim Zhu on fight night because he really haven't dealt with any boulders in that division of uh, being punched on in that division uh, by possibly somebody who comes close to the power of Tim Zhu, right? Maybe not even taking Tim Zhu's power because to me, Tim Zhu is uh, the, the hardest puncher and 154 pounds. Maybe you could say Jamil Charlo as well, right? Um, because technically, uh, knocking out Brian Mendoza isn't like, I'm not Brian Mendoza, um, Brian Castano, uh, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, right? And we haven't seen Castano since. Since that fight, since that night, we haven't seen him. So that, that goes to show you that Jamel Charlo actually has power as well. But come on, man, either one of these guys are getting in the ring with Jamel Charlo no time soon. So, I mean, going from somebody who really couldn't stand up in the first round, opposed to taking on the the division's best, especially when it comes to power, yeah, it could be a, a long night for Virgil Ortiz or a short night for Tim Zoo, right? Um, and what I mean by that is uh, Virgil could stand there all night trying to get him out of there and having to do it by points, or Tim Zoo could just knock him out uh, in the earlier rounds. That's what I mean about that. But also, um, Tim could be knocked out. I know some of you Australian fans will be like, bro, nephew, it's not going to happen, okay? It's not going to happen. Tim Zoo could never be knocked out. Terrence Crawford cannot knock out Tim Zoo. Virgil Ortiz cannot knock out Tim Zoo. Stop saying it, bro. And I get it, right? I get it. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm not delusional. So I look at fighting as 
as what it is, right? It's two gentlemen throwing their fists at each other. And uh, you don't need that much pressure to knock somebody out. You just got to hit them in the right spot at the right time. That's it, all right? So we've seen we've seen flash knockouts that we didn't even see coming, bro. Uh, especially if you've been watching this sport for a long time. You've seen flash knockouts that you didn't expect was going to happen that happen, right? So, I mean, yeah, it could happen to Tim Zoo too. I mean, it might not have happened just yet, but he have been floored in his career, right? So, I mean, that's that's different from being knocked out. Um, being floored and getting back up is it's totally different from being knocked out. But in that aspect, if he can hit the floor, if he can hit the mat, somebody can put him out, right? So it is what it is in that aspect. I don't think it's a good fight for Tim Zhu uh, with Virgil Ortiz. I know it might it might be a little bit... Uh, I don't know. It might it might be a little bit in the way, or or like um, what I'm looking for, like uh, annoying to a certain degree, right? Because you kind of got to think about it like this. Uh, Tim Zhu has been wanting to get this Jamel Charlo fight for forever, right? Big payday, big superstar in the game, uh, former undisputed champion of the world. He's been trying to get this fight with Jamel, and then you get Terence Crawford say, "I'll take him on," which happens to be higher on the the pound for pound list than Jamel Charlo. Um, somebody who's not undisputed twice and could possibly be the biggest payday of his life, right? And then you see Virgil Ortiz who, who kind of steps in the middle like, I'll fight you too. It's kind of like, eh, hey, Virgil, I don't want to look like I'm ducking you, bro. But I kind of want to take that Tanch Crawford fight. Like, you dig what I'm saying? So I don't know if this is in the way right now for Tim Zhu, but this scenario where if he does take this fight with Virgil Ortiz, I'm still with it. I'm still going to cover this fight because I do think it's a legitimate fight. Two legitimate names. Now, will it still pan out to be a fight of the year candidate? That's the question, right? Because you still have um, Better Be, Bival, Opatel, Breedis, Fury, Usyk. I don't know what Terrence Crawford is going to do. Um, if he'll go back to 147 to see Boots, that would be cool because they did say that that boost was a possibility. Um, or if we go back and see Spence, which this time if you beat up Spence this time, it won't be impressive uh, because the first one was super impressive. So how do you, um, how do you really like overshadow that first performance? I mean, maybe with a first round knockout, right? If he knock him out in the first round, that would be crazy. But I think Spence gonna have a full head of steam. Uh, coming into this fight, uh, this next fight with Terrence Crawford, and he's gonna be looking to do as much damage as he possibly could, uh, can in that fight. So I don't know, man. This is the RTH podcast. I'm your host nephew, and I'm signing out again, bro. Y'all know I like to give you guys receipts, but I just couldn't find it. I, I did go back and try to find it. I, I gotta get used to like screenshot and stuff right when I see it, just in case I want to come back and give it to you guys. But when I seen it, I was like, bro, it didn't make no sense uh, because technically. Tim Zhu had just uh, got wind that Terrence Crawford might want to come up and see him. So, you know, you kind of want to put yourself on the available list. And so, um, when I thought about it, I was like, wait, that's the same thing that happened with Jamel Charlo. Right? Same thing that happened with Jamel Charlo. Uh, Tim Zhu put himself on the back burner for a little while, allowed Jamel Charlo to go and see Brian Castano and assumed that he would get the shot. And uh, he never did get the shot then, you know, get Jamel Charlo going to go see Canelo Alvarez. And I was like, bruh, it's a high possibility that that article was right. And by the time I tried to go find it, I couldn't find it. So it is what it is in the aspect. I don't think that uh, Tim Zhu will hold off and wait on Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford needs to be sending the contract ASAP and run for Tim Zhu to say, okay, it's real. Uh, it's about to happen. And then he'll probably pull back from trying to fight the likes of Virgil Ortiz and take on Terrence Crawford. But it is what it is. This is RTH Podcast. I'm your host, Nephew, and I'm signing out. Who y'all got win this particular scenario, this showdown, if we were to go down between knockout artists? We're talking about 20 wins, 20 knockouts in Virgil Ortiz. Now, most of this happened in 147 pounds. Um, he was champion in that division. Well, uh, interim champion. In that, in that division uh, Was looking to try to get the Errol Spence fight Or the Terrence Crawford fight But he outgrew the division uh, Fell sick several times in that division While trying to uh, have a unification bout With the likes of Imante Stanionis Since then has returned to the sport of boxing In the, uh, the higher weight class of 154 pounds To get a knockout in the first round Okay, so uh, he keeps his uh, knockout streak alive and also um, has targeted the number one guy in that division being Tim Zhu for a showdown, right? But you have Tim Zhu, man. 
uh, who is looking like a madman driven to becoming undisputed in his campaign has had the number one guy in the division in Jamel Charlo avoid him. All right, now, technically, I do understand taking Canelo Alvarez over fighting the likes of Tim Zoo. The payday is better. The name is bigger. Um, and not to mention, uh, undisputed versus undisputed in men boxing was something that have, that was never seen uh, prior to um, uh, Jamel Charlo and Canelo Alvarez. So it was history in the making. But then when you see his performance on the night, you're kind of like, eh, I didn't have to see that. Right, I could have, I could have not seen undisputed versus undisputed if it, if it was going to look like that, and not look like Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano, where they just both left it in the ring. Right, I'm um, saying that to say Tim Zoo has two out of three knockouts last year. Uh, it's looking like a man driven, like I tell you guys, knockout power, speed, um, and just aggressive. He get in the ring with Mendoza. Mendoza definitely lasted the uh, the onslaught of Tim Zoo. But he did have some uh, crazy rounds versus Mendoza where it looked like Mendoza wasn't going to uh, make it out of, the, out of the night. But it is what it is. And that aspect, Tim Zhu right now is the man at 154 pounds taking on the guy from 147 pounds who is now in 154 pounds. Should be a legitimate fight. It's not the Bud Crawford fight that you guys are looking for, but it's still a legitimate fight. Don't sleep on it. Virgil Ortiz's uh, opportunities of beating Tim Zoo. Don't sleep on Tim Zoo's opportunities of beating Virgil Ortiz, which makes it a good fight. All right, this is the RTH Podcast. I'm your host, Nephew, and I'm signing out. Y'all take it easy, bruh. Hey. RTH Podcast going live, man, with Brawl Night Champions for members only. Party chat debate for a shot at the Community Board Champion, but remember, it's a fight, so don't get knocked out and lose your place in the ranks. Or if you're just here to be a part of the spectacle, that's cool too. Sign up for the first tier to get front row seats to each event and get exclusive content not seen on YouTube. No my tier, but don't get kicked out. See rule books for more details. Oh yeah, ladies and the legends are included if you want to spectate or go for some gold. Brawl Night Champions, sign up now.